Hey guys, Bill Hepson, Workout America TV, coming to you from the beautiful Powerhouse Gym in Stewart, Florida. And we are going to talk today about core training to relieve lower back pain and stabilize the lower back. So when we look at this kind of training, what we want to do is we want to train movement patterns that we use in our daily lives <coughs> that contribute to injury, but that are essential to navigate the three-dimensional world we live in. And so rotation is the most common mechanism for injury for the lower back. Usually some kind of, of rotational uh, movement combined with flexion. Meanwhile, we are rotational animals. We balance the torso with contralateral rotation when we run and walk. Almost all of our movement patterns, throwing, lifting, involves cross-body or PNF rotational patterns, what we would call the Serape effect. Meanwhile, the traditional trainer in the gym, when we think about core training for the lower back, thinks flexion. Crunch, 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 crunch. Flexion does not really contribute a whole lot to lower back stability. We never, you know, when we, when we produce flexion in the real world, all we got to do is relax the back and gravity dumps us forward. And plus, when you combine that, where we anchor the, the ankles or pull the knees up towards the chest, and we have a big contribution from the hip flexors for that torso flexion, we put the lower back at risk for injury, or we do injure the lower back in our training to try and stabilize it. So the bottom line is we need to train movement patterns, train movement, not muscles. So when we look at appropriate training for rotation, if we're going to push a door, pull something open, what's a common denominator? We're on our feet. Core training where you sit down or lay down, sit on the floor, lay on a, you know, lay on the floor, sit in a bench. Basically, we disconnect the hips and butt from the rib cage and upper body. Meanwhile, what does the core do? It connects the hips and butt to the rib cage and upper body. So we need to train on our feet and connect the kin you know, the kinetic chain. And cables are a great way to do that. A very simple exercise to do for this is a rotational punch or a rotational press. So, we take the cable, we're going to start on the shoulder, tap in, rotate. So that is a wonderful whole body dynamic exercise that trains the core in the manner that it works in in many movements in the real life. One of the essential factors there is that when we step out and push is that we want to lift the trailing heel. So the ankle, knee, and hip rotate under the shoulders so the core stays aligned in the direction of the strike. Rotation does not happen at the lower back. Rotation is thoracic spine. So basically, the you know, because of the facet orientation that angle out at the thoracic spine, that allows for sort of lateral glide, transverse glide. At the lower back, the facet joints turn up, so the lower back is designed for flexion and extension. So when we translate rotational torque into the lower back, you set yourself up for injury. How we prevent that? Rotational mechanics, lift the trailing heel, and we come around. You look at any hitting athlete work, whether we're going to hit a golf ball, hit a tennis ball, throw a punch, that's the way it works. So we want to train the body in a manner and produce movements that it has to in the real world. Bill Hempson, Workout America TV, coming to you from Powerhouse Gym. If you like this video, please like and share and certainly subscribe to Workout America TV for more great information.